just like that. A few months ago, I made a video on extracting phosphoric acid from an old rust remover. The yield was pretty terrible, with only 47 milliliters of a cloudy 6.77% acid collected. I saved the green liquid left in the distilling flask from the last run, so I decided I would try to improve my methods from last time to get a better yield. One of the issues I faced was the Teflon stir bar. Unfortunately, incredibly hot phosphoric acid seems to react with PTFE, which may have affected my yields. I also used calcium carbonate boiling stones, which just dissolved in the acid. To tackle this issue, I would need to make some glass boiling stones, which brings us to this video. Although the process of making these boiling stones is pretty simple, some people may find my alternative methods here useful to know for the future. So I started off with some broken glass that I've accumulated over time. Beakers, old candle jars, and even pickle jars will work as most glass is pretty unreactive to most chemicals. The major exception to this, of course, is chemicals containing fluorine. First, you should remove all large bits of anything that is not glass from whatever glass you'd like to convert over to the boiling stones. Then, everything can be placed into a plastic bag, like you see here. Next, I put the plastic bag inside of a larger paper bag. Fabric like a towel would work as well for this step, as long as the fabric is able to entirely contain the glass-filled plastic bag. After this is all set up, you're pretty much set to go to town on the glass with a hammer. Just a word of safety though, you should always wear thick gloves when dealing with glass, as well as eye protection. Before hitting the glass with a hammer, a hatchet in my case because I didn't bother going to get a hammer, make sure to move the bag to a solid location that won't budge. I just moved it to the floor and started whacking. Note that the paper bag, if you use one, may rip some. That was the purpose of the plastic bag within it, to contain everything just in case it spills outwards. After breaking up the glass for a while, I opened up the bag, and this is what we're left with. This is about the right size that you should stop and move on. Back on the lab bench, I laid out the outer paper bag with a large funnel and a bowl on top. The bag serves to prevent glass from getting all over the bench. Just ripping off a bit of the side of the plastic bag should be good enough to empty the glass pieces into the bowl. Next, I took the funnel to use it as a sort of sieve for the smaller pieces of glass. I poured everything into the funnel from the bowl and shook it out and collected the pieces on the paper bag. The smaller pieces collected on the paper bag are good for microscale distillations, but I'm interested in some of the larger pieces that get caught in the funnel. I placed down a piece of white cardboard and moved on to the washing steps. The glass shards in the funnel were washed with a squirt bottle and water a few times. This not only cleans the glass pieces, but removes some of the more dust side particles of glass. Then I laid out a paper towel and placed the glass on it to dry. After it was left out to dry for about 15 minutes, I manually removed the pieces that I thought would best fit my distillation. They were the cleanest of the bunch, which would save some time later on. So after picking through the glass for a little while, these are the pieces that I ended up with. These are still sharp, but regular nitrile gloves should be enough to handle them at this point. The pieces are small, but large enough to be found and picked up in case of a spill. Now if you happen to clean the broken glassware before you began with this, you now have your boiling stones. In my case, however, the glass was still relatively dirty, so I decided to give them a wash with acid. I covered most of the glass with some distilled water, and then added a small amount of hardware store muriatic, or hydrochloric, acid. I gave the glass a bit of a mix, and you can see that the acid solution is visibly less brown colored from before the acid was added. In most cases, the acid washes enough to clean the glass. If not, however, a base wash can be used with just substituting sodium hydroxide solution instead of hydrochloric acid. To get rid of the acid, I washed again with distilled water four times. Then I emptied the remaining water and laid out the shards on a paper towel to dry. I ended up folding over the paper towel to make the transfer easier for storage before I made this cut of the video. I just decided to use the little yogurt jar I had laying around to hold the boiling chips for later use. 
So because I've been incognito for a few months now, my planned videos list has changed quite a bit. I plan on tackling as many of these videos as I can during the summer. I'll be using these glass boiling chips in the upcoming video re-extracting the phosphoric acid. If you enjoy my content, feel free to visit my Patreon page if you wish to contribute to making more science videos like these. As always, thank you for watching.